tragics for this week. Unfortunately, Andrew Lennon's not with us tonight, but we do welcome back to the panel, Will Baum. Thanks, Nick. It's good to be back on the three-man ship. It's great to have you back on this three-man ship. And now, speaking of which, Brenton Mann, he's been with us every week. Welcome. Uh, still what? Yeah, still what again. Now, I'll yep. keep with the nautical theme. We're not going to be rudderless tonight. We're the young bucks. We're going to take the... Sometimes you got to throw the keys to the young bucks, see how they go. Yeah, and we're going to be short, sharp, and to the point. And we know the pressure is on. Let's get straight into William Buck Premier. There were three games decided by two points or less this week. Absolutely fantastic round. You, Branton, were at De La Salle and University Blacks. Can you give us a bit of a rundown? I did take a look at it. I wasn't there, but I did take a little look. And it was Blacks with a narrow one-point win over De La, who was that two losses in a... Two losses of, in a row. I'm not sure in, in a... In three weeks. Two losses in three weeks, sorry. And then, uh, which is not troubling signs, but it was De La just uh, ahead by three points at three-quarter time. And it was Blacks who stormed home inaccurately, but to, with two goals five to two goals one. But it was the man of the moment, Bede Mann in his hundredth, just spoiled the ball with mere seconds to go and got them over the line. Absolutely, he did. Fantastic effort by the Blacks. And now they've won two on the trot. Yes, they have. Two on the trot and uh, just building. They're sitting six on the ladder and building every week. Because Ken Cam Roberts... Yeah. Can he do it? Can he take them? They're six. Like you said, they're six. Can, they've won two. They did lose three on the trot previous to that, but it seems like everything's all click. Lockie Dornoff kicked another five goals. He's, oh. a, he's, a, he's a highlight reel. He's a bit of a bit of a favourite, but he's a bit <laughs> of a highlight reel. So can they do it, though? Look, it's an interesting one with both the uni sides. About uh, three weeks ago, they both had pretty heavy losses. I mean, the Blues took on the Collegians, got smashed. So it's good to see they're back on board. And... Uh, I don't think they can quite do it. There's a couple of sides up the top. Trinity in particular are looking very strong, but uh, you know they might cause some surprises. Speaking of sides at the top, there's a new one in second place, and that's Old Melburnians. After they defeated, it's a bit of a surprise too, Old Zavarians at Turak Park by two points. It was a great, it was a three versus four, sorry, prior to the game, and it was a Nick Steiger led Old Melburnians. Big fan of his work. He is dominating in the ruck, and he gets back as well. Gets a lot of intercept marks. Old Zavarians were without John Shaw on the weekend, so they were a bit down. They welcomed back Lachlan Howe, but it was Nick DeSteiger who ultimately was the difference in the end. The OMs were able to hold them off thanks to a hot start by Al, Al Armstrong. He's a bit, we're a big fan of Al Armstrong. He kicked three goals, or he kicked five for the match. He kicked three goals in the first quarter, in, including this absolute stunner from the boundary. If you have a look at that, that's a very, very close contender for goal of the year early on. Now, the Zabs kept in reach all day after falling behind after the first quarter. They kept in reach all day, and they were switching really well out of defence. But something I noticed about Zavarians, which I also noticed against St Bernard's in, the, in round one, is that they switch really well, but they seem to break down. They seem to not have that link man at the moment. I, I know Tyson Thomas is out at the moment. Darvell's out at the moment. They seem to miss that link man in between the two arcs. So they're getting it out of defence really well, but they're breaking down and turning it over, which is causing a lot more scoring opportunities. So I think if they can paper over that until Tyson Thomas comes back, perhaps, then they're, then they're a red-hot chance. But, Will, did you see them Did now, you see them starting like this? I mean, I've got to ask, uh, if Thomas doesn't play, who can, who can possibly fill that void? Because as, we, as we've seen in the AFL and at VAFA level, as it usually filters down, that link-up man at half forward is pivotally important. Like the Tom Lynch uh, at Adelaide Crow, Shane Kirsten at Geelong. Uh, so who fills that gap if uh, Xavier can't find, um, can't get Thomas back for next week? Well, it might not be a personnel thing. It could be a tweaking of the game plan and how you deliver the ball out, out of your D50 and how you transition it down the ground. It might be maybe taking a bit more risk through the middle, maybe linking with hands, um, things of that nature. But it is a little bit of a problem, but it's still early in the season. I'm sure they'll get on top of it. I mean, old Melbournians, though, they're... Fantastic story coming up from Premier B. They really look like a, a really strong side. Good bunch of mates, I'm sure. I'm not sure about that. Um, but yeah, it's really good, really positive to see they're sitting second now. Yeah, they, they, they look absolutely fantastic. Matt Thomas probably got two best ons in the previous two rounds. Was actually really well held by Corley Beatham. who caused him a, bit, a few issues. And as you can see here, he gave away a couple of 25 metre penalties, which he wouldn't have been happy about. But he came out in that second half and he was a big part of their comeback. He put it together, he, he had a few big hits, gave a few big hits, received them. The Zavs really went after him, but if they can get him, obviously, back in form next week, and for the rest of the year, they're a red-hot chance. Moving on, Old Carey lost to St Kevin by 113 points at Carey Sports Complex. What was big about this game is the 31 goals 18. 
204 points. I actually can't remember having the last time it happened in William Bark Premier. But if you look at the statistics, Old Kerry actually kicked 14 7 91, and they were the second highest the second highest score in Wilming Buck Premier this weekend, meaning it was a very free-flowing free, free flowing game, but the defence just wasn't there, Brent. It was like a leaky sieve, but it would have been a great game to watch, and 20 goals shared between Stephen Gillum, Cal Williams, Billy Kanakis, I love that name, Billy Kanakis, and Jordan Gisbert's full of scobbers. Now, they're starting to find their feet in Premier. Now, after speaking to Big Shorts, Dan Harf, uh, Daniel Harford, on the weekend, they're not getting too ahead of themselves. I believe they play Trinity this week, which is a massive test to see how far they... they they have come, but they're starting to build. But Old Man Burnham is just in front of them at the moment, and but I'm sure Scobbers will click into gear the next probably four or five weeks. I think uh, a big thing at uh, St Kevin's is um, blokes like Charlie Ring, the lesser lights at St Kevin's, if they keep uh, producing good games, as Charlie did on the weekend, they're going to be a force in Premier. But it's just finding that, uh, you know, probably the 10 to 15 players, because obviously they've got up the top, Stephen Gillum, Salopec, who didn't play on the weekend, Kanakas, that sort of thing. But they get a few more blokes filtering through from the uh, the old boys, you know, St Kevin's boys. Who knows where the season could go? And mind you, I know we're talking about the lesser lights, but Rowan Bale was actually best on ground on the weekend. <laughs> so all their big names stood up. As you said, they're lesser lights, so they're going to be a force to be reckoned with in the coming weeks. Collegians, unfortunately, weren't able to get it done despite leading Old Trinity at three-quarter time. They lost by two goals at Harry Trot Oval. Old Trinity, against the win, kicked six goals in that last quarter with Christos Manasakos, best on ground, kicking two goals. <laughs> the Lions' defence was miserly once again. I actually wrote an article last week about their Tom Thibodeau-type defence. I did see that. And, but honestly, Shane Joyce has them playing a fantastic brand of defence. If they can obviously turn it around, put a few more points on the board, they're not without a chance of finals either this year. Uh, Jack Osborne has turned his turned his game around. He is he's a running machine for Old Trinity. And Seb Nicolosi was the other one who made his return on the weekend. He was a rising star nominee last year. Absolute superstar up forward. Couldn't quite put it on the board this week. He kicked four or five behinds. But Will, if he gets going, we know we know the damage he can do on the scoreboard. Well, according to the man himself, he kicked zero six on the weekend, old Seb. But um, he's very strong up forward, and he's such a dangerous small forward for them. So, if he gets into a fine form, I tell you what, Trinity are going to be hard to stop. But Collegians, once again, a massive story this yeah. season. From uh, from a team that some people predicted to be a relegated side, they have really come on. Um, I think Trinity, obviously, there's a few issues with their third term. I just want to go yeah. through that. For, before you go on to that, Will, I'll ask you about it. In the past six games, so the six rounds, 0, 1, 2, 2, 2 and 2. They're the amount of goals that Old Trinity's kicked in the third quarter. Now, we know it is the Premiership quarter. Well, it's like to be known as the Premiership quarter. Is that going to be an issue if they cannot rectify it? I wonder. I think it might be an issue of a young side just falling flat. Uh, at the start of the second half because I mean they're too good a side and they're too fit to um, to go flat in the third term but I think it just might be a little bit of an experience thing um, you never know when they get their tinnies back and their yetsies back they might be able to find their feet in the third term it'll be pretty scary at that stage absolutely they will and hopefully we can bring you some news on Brendan Yetsy's return this weekend in the other game in William Buck Premier University Blues scraped over the line against uh, St Bernard sorry 70 to 72 they didn't fire all game, but kicked the goal with about six minutes remaining, and they were able to shut the game down, shut the Snow Dogs down, except probably Tom Sullivan, who is, as we know, a superstar, was the Snow Dogs' best again. Jack Townley returned down back and was a big reason for University Blues' win on the weekend. That's William Buck for me for this for today. <laughs> we'll take a break, and we'll be back with more Vapa Tragics. Anytime is the right time to get fit at Anytime Fitness. Access over 400 gyms across the country 24-7 and discover why more Australians train at Anytime Fitness than any other gym. Go online and register now for your free seven-day pass and feel something better. Welcome back to Vapid Tragics. We'll move right on to Premier B. And Will, you had a look at Old Scotch and Old Halebury. I did indeed. Down at Campbell Sports Ground. It was a windy day, as you can tell by the scoreline. We had Old Halebury at three-quarter time, leading by 14 points. But Scotch in the last were far too strong and came away with a pretty comfortable win in the end. Uh, for Scotch, it was Hugo Perry, who was absolutely outstanding, half forward midfielder. He's got great size about him. Uh, has a bit of a build like a Jack Gunston, uh, Andrew Mackey type, but um, he can really play. But also, uh, Darcy Byrne Jones's brother, Luke, down back, very strong for Scotch. Uh, for for Halebury, they were really particularly strong in the third quarter and they're very good in contested situations. 
just don't think they quite had the fitness to go with Scotch. Um, uh, but Daniel Harrison was very good for them, and uh, Treverton kicked three up forward. However, Scotch, they're looking pretty scary at the minute, aren't they, Nick? They are. They're five, they're five and one. They're right on Bo Morris's yep. tail. Yes. I mean, Bo Morris didn't have the most convincing win against Hampton Rovers, who were winless on the weekend. They meet, I think, in two weeks. That's going to be a fantastic game between those two sides. Also in Premier B, as we said, Bo Morris, they, I wouldn't say scrapped over the line, but they defeated uh, Hampton Rovers by 28 points. Fitzroy got their second win on the trot against Old Brighton, who are, at the moment, struggling a little bit in Premier B. St. Bede's Mento Tigers moved to third spot on the ladder with a nice 28 point win over Monash Blues. And Parkdale Vultures held Ajax to two goals in their, in their win at Gary Smorgan Oval. But we're moving on to Premier C. Will, I'll throw back to you because you are the Q boy, you are our Q <laughs> man. They've had another close loss. Yeah, it was very disappointing for Andrew Brazali's 100th game, one of the stars of the VAFA. Um, but uh, Caulfield were very good and they had more opportunities than Q throughout the day. Uh, again, it was an issue of the wind on the, in the eastern suburbs uh, down at Q, uh, Victoria Park. Um, but Q's second quarter was particularly strong. They kicked goals from everywhere. You had Sam Glover, Andrew Brazali, Lee and Kinsella all dominating. However, Caulfield took the ascendancy in the third quarter and never looked back. Uh, Tim Nixon in the midfield was dominant for them. Um, you had Jack Delbridge for Q, very strong in the middle. Uh, but Caulfield Grammar, their, their third quarter when they held Q to just one goal with the wind. In the last, it got to within three points. Caulfield sealed the game with a goal after the siren. It just looks like it might be one of those years for the Q Bears. Just uh, very close in three encounters, losing by eight points or less. But just can't get the chocolates. They're two and four now. Caulfield are right up there. They're chasing a flag this year. Now, it is really close in the top end of Premier C, but is this something that Q can learn from and in the second half of the season? Like, I know you've you needn't write them off, but you think it might be a learning curve. But if someone does fall from that top four, top five, there's no saying that Q won't push if they can get these close games done. Absolutely. I mean, the next two weeks they have Camwell and Marcelin. If they go into four and four, and then, say, Williamstown or uh, Old Ivanhoe drop a couple of games, they're going to play some of the better sides in the competition. You never know. But, um, yeah, they've got a very young side, Q, so I don't think... Not all's lost. There's no, no uh, reason why they can't turn it around and... Come in the top five, top four obviously would be better, but uh, yeah. Only six rounds in the season, still plenty of football to be played. Old Ivanhoe, as you said, got it done over Old Camberwell on the weekend by 37 points. Ormond really took it up to Mazenod Brenton. Mazenod are currently undefeated 6 and 0, but Ormond only lost by 16 points. Yeah, it was a really good performance by Ormond because Mazenod are flying at the moment but it's tough going down to EE Gun and playing on the, on the gun. It's a tough, mm. small, caked in over the ground. And the big boys of Ormond, uh, they relish in it, but that's not just too good, and they keep flying. And Ben Fibbs has really, oh. really turned that, that club around. I'll tell you what, man crushes Ben Fibbs for mine. He's a gun. He's an absolute gun. And he's a good bloke, so he's, he's doing well leading the Chargers down at Mazenod. And congratulations to both Williamstown as well, as they absolutely smashed Marcel on the weekend by 73 points. Mm. Marcel got their first win last week, obviously weren't able to back it up, unfortunately for them. And Oakley lost to Peninsula by 47 points at Scamore Reserve. Peninsula back on the board also after losing to Mazenod, but they are looking fantastic in second position. Moving all right along to the division report, Brenton. Oh, here we go, the division report. <laughs> uh, we'll start in Div 2. Now, the Unicorns, Melbourne High, they had a fantastic three-point win over Preston, and they, they hung on. They were, it was four goals, six to one goal. Preston kicked four goals, six to one goal in the last quarter. The Unicorns held on. And that was a fantastic win for them. And we'll stay in Div 2 with St. John's Old Collegians. They're 6 and 0, oh. sitting atop the ladder. Speaking now, of man crushes. As, we'll, as we said last week, it's familiar territory for them. They just need to keep pushing, hold this form for, uh, for probably the next three, four weeks and really, really cement their spot atop the Div 2 ladder. And then, yeah, they had a smashing win over the um, the Snakes, Richmond Central. Now, Brenton's just bristling over here. Oh, the former St. <laughs> John's, you're bristling. I'm, I am bristling. Uh, Timmy <laughs> Edwards kicked nine, and Aaron Thornton kicked six. Now, we'll go to Div 3, Glenora. I reckon the story of the division is Glenora. This is a club that has taken advantage of Monash Griffin's folding, uh, moving to clubbies, I believe. Yeah. In So, they've, a few players have gone from Monash Griffin's over to Glenora, and they are flying. They beat... The Canter they beat Canterbury by 13 points. Now it's Canterbury's second loss in a row after being undefeated. So Glenora are still a six and zip, sitting atop of the Div 3 ladder. 
Now Latrobe leapfrog the Cobras. I just want to stop you there. Yes. I think Hawthorne might have something to say about sitting at the top. No, of the sorry. Well, 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 <laughs> tight, tight at the top. We'll say tight at the top. I believe. Very tight. Yeah. Very tight. No, they are, it's tight. They're both yeah. undefeated. Two standout yeah. sides. Two yeah. standout sides. Yeah. The man from the man next to lives down the road from Rathmines Reserve just pulled me aside. <laughs> Sorry, Hawthorne sit atop the ladder. Glenora looking out for you. Very Pat. close second. Uh, Latrobe, Leapfrog, Canterbury, with a 149 point win over Parkside. Unbelievable. Yeah, unbelievable. It was uh, Latrobe now sit. I believe they sit third. Third. Yep. So that's a fantastic win for them. And we'll go down to Div 4, Point Cook, 27 point win over North Brunswick with Jordan Lampy kicking three and BOG. And I reckon, uh, oh, Thierry Panola, I want to touch on Thierry Panola. Uh, they had a 56 point win over the winless Old Paradians, which isn't, I, I guess, you know, uh, much of a surprise. But Jordan Bannister kicked uh, six, which is 17 from three games. He's flying. One of the Jared Bannister, sorry, not Jordan. Jordan is his one brother. One of the big names down at Thierry Panola. He is absolutely fantastic. Mm. That's, I'm glad you pointed that out. But the thing for Thierry, they need to iron out consistency. Mm. For the last five weeks, they've gone three wins, two losses, but they've gone win, loss, win, loss, win. Now they need to so iron that out. out just to, just <laughs> to really push. In the second half of the year, they just need to iron out the consistency, but I'm sure they'll get there, the boys from Oak Park. So and that rounds out the division report. Any questions, Nick? Thank you very much. I just want to know if... Thierry are now going to lose this weekend. Now that you've called that. Well, judging on their form, they might, but I don't think they will. They um, they'll find that consistency. They're a very strong club, and with the Ban with Bannister flying up forward, I'm sure they're going to be a force to be reckoned with later in the year. Just quickly touching on Division Four, yes. uh, Point Cook are playing very well. Lost the one yes. for the year. Is there any chance that they can push Westbourne Grammarians? As we know, Westbourne are the team to beat in Division Four. Westbourne are the team to beat, and we love Westbourne Grammarians. Then we? we love them out at Tarnate, yep. but the boys at Point Cook, their neighbours. They might be able to push them, but I can't. You can't write off Westbourne. No, not write them off, but you can't question Westbourne at the moment. I think they've got, they're flying, and they sit well above all, all and sundry in Div Four. Thank you very much for that, Brenton. <laughs> Moving on to our performance players of the week, Will will start start us off. Now I'm going to go with uh, Nick Nick Devereaux. Plays the UHS for you. Uh, played against the the man. He's, he's a good size about him, about six foot two. Kicked five goals on the weekend. They had a big win, a 95 point win over Elstonwick. Elstonwick are struggling, to be fair, but uh, UHS they're rolling now. They're three in a row after losing the first three games of the year. And uh, boy, Nicky can play. So performance player of the week. Thank you, Will Brenton. <laughs> well, I don't mean to keep this St John's theme rolling, but I did something just did prick me on social media <laughs> that. Uh, their captain, Glenn Costas, now, the injured, their injured centre-half back, Liam O'Connor, was uh, taking stats for the day. Now, take it this what you will. He thinks, he believes, that Costas had 60 disposals, 8 clearances, 15 marks, 3 tackles, 1 smother, 2 goal assists and kick 1 goal 1. 60 disposals. Now, I don't... <laughs> he might have juiced that up a little, but I'm going to take the man at his word. So that's an unbelievable performance by their St John's captain, and he's flying and taking the number 13 for the, the lone number 13 this year. And he, as I said, he's flying. That is a definite performance player of the week, if that is even half true. My performance <laughs> player of the week, we've touched on him al already. Sorry, University Blacks, Bede Man, an absolute stalwart, a big V representative, the skipper down there, punching it over in those dying seconds, four seconds remaining, I believe. Bede, you get my performance player of the week. Congratulations, Concert, and good luck for the rest of the season. Barmy, it is now time for what we've all been waiting for. Can you please give us your army? Well, it's great to be back here uh, on Barmy's army, or the show Vapid Tragics, but mainly <laughs> for Barmy's army. Now, number one, I mentioned him before earlier in the show, old Scotch boy, Hugo Perry. I'll tell you what, he caught my eye last season when he was one of the better performed players for Scotch in a very disappointing season, relegated. But this year, as Scotch are flying, Hugo Perry is flying with them. And uh, he was very impressive on the weekend, kicked a couple of goals, was very good through the midfield and up half forward. And uh, yeah, there's a bit of Jack Gunston, Andrew Mackey, as I mentioned about his size. Um, so welcome to the army, Hugo, welcome. Uh, now, Carl Kadawi, Division One, Ivanhoe, kicked five goals, had a great season so far. He's kicked 17 of the best. Now, he's six, uh, Ivanhoe is six on the ladder. Carl Kadawi is six on the goal kicking tally. Is it a sign? Is it a sign? As he rises through the ranks, will Ivanhoe rise through? <laughs> this man, I'm predicting they will. Uh, now, finally, Nick DeSniger. Old Melbournians, they're sitting second. They're flying in Premier Division. 
William Buck Premier, sorry. And Nick is a big reason uh, why. He's a, he's a big man. He smashed the Zavarians in the ruck on the weekend. And he's having a very strong season. Now, Nick, you had a theory on uh, why he's improved so much. Big, bigger tank. And uh, I tell you what, after watching him on the weekend, I feel that Nick uh, will be in the team of the year for Premier. And congratulations, Nick, you're in the army. Congratulations to all those three players. Thank you, Will, for your Barmy's army. That's it for tonight's Vaffa Tragics. Thank you for joining us. And Andrew will be back in this seat next week. Thank you to the gentleman to my left. We'll see you next week for some more Vaffa Tragics.